This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Um, how many windows are there? Only four? Four. Four, yes. And are any of them on the front elevation? No, they, they... One on the side near the driveway. On the side. They all, all four of them are on the side. Yeah, there are two on the driveway side, two on the opposite side of the home. Okay. Right. So let me ask let me ask people that are in the contracting business because I'm certainly not. Um, does he have any other option besides glass block? He could put in wood windows. <laughs> What's the what is the foundation material? Is it cast concrete or concrete? I believe block? so. Pardon me. Yes, concrete. Yeah. I believe. Right, but it's not it's not block, is it? Are there mortar joints? Uh, you know, are they like eight by 16 inches or is it solid concrete? I think that's it's a stone solid. foundation. I'm sorry, Steve? I thought it was a stone foundation. That, what's the age on that house, Jenny? I didn't I didn't see the blue sheet. It was building, oh, building 35, 36. 36. Yes, yeah, that's 1936. Correct. I think the window wells look like they're cast concrete or something. Yes, they look like it to me. Well, all I can say is that um, my house has a cast concrete foundation, and I have wood windows in my basement, and I have no window wells. Uh, I think I think wood windows would be an option, and I I believe that. Uh, it might be possible to get a, a metal window. I don't know for certain. Uh, I, there are lots of metal window companies. I don't know who would make ones this size, but I believe they are available. And I know what Steve was talking about, about the frame being mortared into the wall, but generally speaking, it's just mortar. It's not... Uh, some some metal windows, some old metal windows, particularly if they had a storm window uh, as part of it, there are fins that are uh, embedded in in the concrete. But I don't. It doesn't appear to me that, at least from what I can see in the photos, that that's the case. Ed, so Jenny, I, yes. Jenny, yeah, I actually went. I looked at those windows. The bottom. The bottom on the window is mortared in, but the two sides are flanged into the wall. They are not mortared into the wall, so you could chip away mortar to pull the frame out. I've done these windows before. You have to cut the frame and collapse it. Then you can't get the other frame inside the wall on either side without changing the window size because they are flanged. They got about an inch and a half flange, inch and a quarter, inch and a half flange that's embedded on the right and left yeah, side yeah. of the window. Well, for for a basement window uh, in a window well, if it's if the size is a little different, I wouldn't be particularly concerned about that because it's not visible. It, it's not very visible. So um, I'd like to make a, um, a comment as well. I, I too have a cement or stone foundation. I have window wells. And I do have wood windows um, in my basement. Um, I feel strongly that the glass block, we never approve glass blocks, especially on residential um, homes. And it significantly changes the architectural integrity and characteristic of a home. Yep, I um, so I, I would ask the applicant if you feel comfortable looking into replacing them with wood and, and seeing if we could, if some of the window companies could come out and give you an idea if it can be done with a wood window. How do you feel about that? Um, Our applicant. Well, I would have felt more comfortable if these windows were so visible from from any not from any side of the of the house actually. Uh, these are not very visible. And what I like about the present design is that they all the windows can open very easily with a little lock, and they, I can have cross ventilation through the whole 
um, uh, basement. So I'm trying to think how that would work with, with what kind of wood structure I would have to have to get the same kind of ventilation. I um, can go into it, but I feel uh, if it was more prominent, uh, into, at least more visible, I would have felt more comfortable with that. A very standard type of operation for a wood window in a basement is <coughs> an awning type window. The prime sash, which would be the sash with glass in it, would be at the inside face of the wall. Uh -huh. uh, it's hinged at the top, and you can uh, pull it open and and either, you know, depending how how fancy you want to get, you can use a hook and eye to hold the window open. Uh, that's that's what I've got at my house, and I have I have storm windows for my basement, and uh, now that just last summer, our, my husband uh, restored all our screen windows. So we have storms and screens, so you can have that thermal- um, Ventilation. Yeah, you can have the ventilation, but also in the winter, you have the thermal protection a little bit. A glass, a glass block, you're not gonna get very much ventilation. I mean, That's I know, right. I, I think uh, you'd have far more ventilation with a, with a wood window and, I would be willing to do a little research and uh, see if there, if you, there are no dimensions for these windows in the application. Is that right, Steve? Correct. Well, Peter, Peter, make, let me make the comment. I, I understand where you're coming from, and, and visually, I did go to to the home and I walked by your house, and and from the driveway, especially that driveway front window is is visible visible enough for us to be concerned that's the reason why you're here so you're here because of the visibility of the window i mean yes it's not you know jumping out at us but but as far as the hpb is concerned it is visible from public view so we've made that decision already um and i i'm i'd like to ask again do you would you feel comfortable looking into having some wood or some window companies come over to the house and see what kinds of options they may be able to give you sure i can do that especially you know if i can get some recommendations who to contact i would love to do that okay all right there are two, th two things if i if you don't mind i'd like to make just two two little things um one thing is the fact that glass box are, are better secure um for a home versus a wood sash window and the other thing is that glass block windows were introduced into homes in the early 1900s, right around 1900 itself. So they are historically relevant as far as the material that was available at the time of construction. So and, and can I, can I say out. one something? Sorry, can I say something about that? Reminds me about something that's not directly related to the basement the windows, but the front door of this house is very special. It's got a, it's a uh, it's got a piece of glass in it that is actually uh, like the block uh, windows, and it comes from. It's written up in in in, in I think in your documents. Uh, so it I didn't never thought about it till now. It also matches matches the glass that's in the front door. Uh, and, um, so I, I I just made this link which I never made before. <laughs> okay, can I um can I make a can I make a comment? This is directly out of our design guidelines. There is a whole section on glass block windows, and it begins to say the use of glass block to fill window openings generally is not appropriate in historic buildings. Glass block windows are normally installed in basement windows where ventilation is needed. However, the small vent windows set into glass block are inadequate to provide adequate ventilation and are visibly obtrusive and inappropriate in historic buildings. Glass block in basements um, are noted, um, they can be done with, with without obtrusive events. Um, so there's a whole, where glass brick is approved, the HPB may require additional um, visual blocking. So our design guidelines talk about not using glass block uh, if, if at all possible. So that brings me back to, I, I would like Peter to, um, to look into having somebody else come in and seeing what other options he has, if, if he's agreeing to that and we can, Hold this open as well if you'd like, um, or we can vote on it, Peter. It's up to you. So could I, could yeah. I just make a? I'm I'm happy for for, for for you to move ahead, but 
just for this particular design, they have a section in the middle that actually swivels open. Uh, all four of them would, would have, I, I don't know whether you can see it on the picture, but yes. uh, they actually open. Oh, the, the, the right bottom picture on, on, on the Hawkeye block, glass yes. block. You see, see, it op opens in the middle. So just just for your for your uh, so just did you know that it's not it's not going to be a solid piece of glass. It will be open to swivel up, uh, swivel. Yeah, and our concern not is not so much function functionality because you can get that with a wood window. A wood window okay. would provide you with ventilation. It's more or less the material. Okay. So, um, so we'll keep this open, and we will um, let you get some wood window guys in there, window people in general, um, and see what you can find. Okay, Peter? Thank you. We have, do, we have somebody, do we have somebody that we can recommend that you go contact in this regard? Thank you. I, I think any of the, of the window manufacturers locally? Yes. If you, if you were to go over to, for instance, Morris Sash and Door, which is on um, East Jefferson Road, a uh, little bit north north of the corner of East Jefferson Road and East Henrietta. East Henrietta and Jefferson Road. Yes. Uh, Wally Morse, the owner there, lives in the village. Um, I'm sure he, he'd be happy to help you with that. Um, Thank you. There are some, you could go to Rochester Colonial. Uh, okay, Peter, can you Thank you. Can you Thank Morse? you. I got that. Yep. If you need more assistance, you can call the Village Hall and we can try to help you, okay? Thank you so much. All right, thanks, Peter. Okay, moving on to um, 36 oh, Monroe Avenue. No, I thought you have to stay in here now. 36 Monroe Avenue, we have a portrait model. Is the applicant on with us? I can't go there. Hey, Jimmy, Jimmy, you might want to mute. Okay. So is the applicant on for our porch at 36 Monroe? Uh, Mr. Caliccio had signed on, but it looks like he's not with us anymore. Um, Steve, do you have any contact with him? Sorry, it's muted. Let me look on his application, see if I can reach him. Okay, we're gonna move on to five Monroe. For the remodel, then while we're waiting, so if you guys can go down to Five Monroe, is the Five Monroe applicant on with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, hi. Hi. Uh, so hey, I am. So, I am so curious. This little cute little building that used to be that antique store. What yeah, I, What are you What are you doing in there? Um, I well, I'm not yeah, certain yeah. for sure. Yep. Yep. Can you hear me? Jeff, please put yourself on mute. Thank you. Oh. Oh, okay, sorry about that, applicant. Go okay. ahead. No, that's okay. That's okay. I'm not 100% certain yet, but I think we're going to do a pop-up retail, like temporary retail um, event, um, you know, like pop-up trunk shows, things like that. Okay, okay. So that's, that's going to be a separate, that doesn't connect with the uh, restaurant around the back? No, no. Okay, all right. Just interested. Okay. So, <laughs> it, so it looks like you are looking to install a new fixture over the door, correct? Uh, the back door are you talking about? Yeah, the, well, would you call that the back door? The side door? Oh, well, it's more of like, uh, well, the front door, there's going to be a new sconce because the one that's there now is broken. Um, and uh, so a new sconce to the right of the door, if you're, or left of the door if you're looking yeah, at yeah, the building. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, two um, gooseneck lights above that, mm -hmm. uh, above to the right of the window to, because yeah. there's no sign, you know, you don't notice the building, so it needs lighting. Mm -hmm. And then um, we wanted to remove the glass block window and put in two um, the windows that are shown there. Um, for there's no ventilation in there. It's basically like a jail cell. So um, okay. two windows there. Um, remove the side air conditioning unit that's really old and ancient on the side and get rid of that and just block that off. Um, and then there's a new back door for emergency purposes. Um, 
because there's only the one way in and out of the front. So um, a, a back door with a light above that. So so let's so I see the sconce, the mm -hmm. style of the sconce, and I see that the gooseneck lights are similar to what's on that building already in other areas, right out over chandeliers. Uh, yeah, similar. Yep. Okay, and then the window um, is the material on the window. Can you tell us a little bit? I don't have any materials on this. Yes, it would be a slider. Um, it's black vinyl. So it's a vinyl window. Mm-hmm, because there's a, currently a vinyl window in the bathroom. That little side, um, I do, there's the side drawing, the wind, tiny small, but window to the end is vinyl. On so, its dial. Oh, I see, I see. So I don't have the dimensions of this window either, I don't think. Oh, yes, I do. I do. The new opening, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, the new openings are approximately increasing by 12 inches so that they, she could put two sliders in because they couldn't find a 60 inch by 24. Right, right. Okay. Um, little side note, Mike Caliccio was on, he is on, he's a caller number two and for some reason muted, so he is on. Okay. But when we get back to him, I don't know if Marina can try and unmute him. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions for the applicant? Is anybody concerned about the vinyl window? <clears throat> and you're muted. If there's one there already, I don't have a problem with this. This is a modern addition to the old building. You know, you know why it's so you know why it's so dark in the back there? There was a liquor store, and that's where all the that's where all the product was. <laughs> okay. Okay. <Connor's> liquor. <laughs> Ken, Morrow. Ken Morrow, do you have any comment for the applicant or questions? So what's what's gonna go on the side of the building? What do you mean? What side? The side face in the old gas station. Ken, that, that's the side where the, the windows get window. increased in size. There, there's a single window there now that's glass block. She's replacing it with and increasing the window opening by 12 inches in width and putting two sliding windows in that space instead of the glass block. And that other opening's the air conditioner shown in the kind of hand drawing. No, that's, that's that's another little window from the bathroom. Oh, okay. That's the existing so, vinyl window. It's already there. And that's yeah. where the vinyl windows are going? Yeah, the vinyl window already exists in the bathroom. The air conditioning will be taken out and blocked back in. Okay, so then in the front, it's going to have like a window like there now, maybe the same one. It's the same window there. They're not changing that one. And the door is the same? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're putting three lights in the front and then one in the back and a door right. in the back? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And what's the door going to be made of in the back? I believe that's a fiberglass door. So then is this going to face that restaurant then or what's it going to face? It's going to face the side of the gas, the back side of the gas station which is what, like the restaurant to the back courtyard? Yeah, it's the courtyard yeah. behind the tequilaria. The door, the door will actually be facing the courtyard, the little courtyard behind tequilaria. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mark, do you have any questions or comments for the applicant? No, I'm fine, thank you. Jeff Pollock? I'm good. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Okay, does anybody want to make a motion? I got to give Ginny a break because you guys are going to force me into doing it. But next week, be ready because I'm going to delegate. <laughs> you, guys have, you guys have to get out your... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's, I already made it so simple. You just have to fill in the blank, literally. Now I'm trying to find my mind that I had all the whole time, but now I can't find it. So, Ginny, would you make the motion until I find it? I'll do the last one. Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, oh, no. I, wait a minute. I closed the file. Oh, I found it. I found okay, it. Good. Okay, good. so at the meeting of the HPB on May 
2021, the filing motion was made. I make a motion to accept as submitted the application for um, window, lighting, and door made by, oh gosh, who's our, who's our person? Oh, somebody help me out. Who's the name? Applicant, what's your name? Danielle oh, Flint. Danielle Flint. <laughs> Danielle Flint. At the property at, gosh, my window, I'm all disorganized. At the property at 5 Monroe Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and do I have a second? Second. So does that does that call out the does your motion do, does the application spell out the specifics of what's going to be put in? Yes. <laughs> it's it's all there. That's the openings there. The light pictures are there. The placements there. Everything's in the application. Did you see it? Right. All the manufacturer specs are there in no, the application. We have dimensions are not there they're just photographs right. dimensions and materials are listed we don't have a manufacturer there but we don't need a manufacturer we just need materials and dimensions and the visualization of it and the placement that's all there in the application okay so you guys are happy with that well i'm going to make a motion are um, you concerned unless you have some questions or concerns Well, my concern is just that I think you you need to be a specific about what's being put in. We have the specifics there that we need, uh, unless you have something there that you don't see or that you need that you don't see. Well, I see photographs. There, there are not manufacturers' cut sheets with dimensions on the on the fixtures. We have this picture of the fixture. Right. There's a photograph, but there are no yeah. dimensions on it. It could be three feet or it could be three inches. Okay. And we don't, have, we don't have dimensions on this one. Okay. So that's a legitimate point. I know the, the gooseneck says 16 inch shade. 16 inch shade. With just a, yeah. It was just a standard, um, standard gooseneck. Um, and then um, the door measurements are 36 by 80. And I believe the sconce is five inches long. Okay, so I can certainly put that in the um, additions. So I'm gonna have to change that. Um, before I do that, I'm gonna make a new motion. Ken, is there anything else? Can I ask one other question. Is there a limit to how many lumens of light you can put output with a fixture like the one next to the door good question yeah max max of 75 watts in the in the village like old style lumen rating yes 3000 kelvin is the max or 75 watts okay good question ken is there anything else that's it okay so I make a motion for the HPB on May 10th, 2021. The following motion will be made. I make a motion that the HPB approve with conditions below the application for window, door, and lighting made by, I forgot your name again, I'm sorry. Danielle, Danielle Fliss. Danielle, Fliss. Danielle. <laughs> okay, at, yep. the, at the location of 5 Monroe Avenue um, and the um, additions um, or the conditions will be the shade on the goose uh, neck lamps will be 16 inches. Uh, the sconce is five inches long and the door is 36 by 80 inches. Please include that in the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, was that Harrington? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, uh, Member Morrow? Yes. Member Pollock? Yes. Member Searle? Yes. Member Harrington? <clears throat> yes. And Chairperson Coles? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Great. Good luck to you. We're excited something's going uh, in. 
it. Yeah, it'll be. It's gonna be cute. Thank you so good. much. Good. Good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Take care. To okay, we're going 30. back to um, the porch at 36 Monroe. Who do we have on for our? Who's our applicant? Mike Calicho. Can you unmute him, Maria? He's caller two, I believe. Mike, okay. you there? Hello, can you? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, hi, Mike. Hi, how are you? Good. Are you the, the contractor that's doing this huge renovation here? Yeah. Okay. Are you the owner? Yes, I'm the owner. Yeah, I think I met you. I, I, I was the one walking down the street with the Doberman. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. Long time no see. It's kind of like I know, I know. I've been watching now. <laughs> Yeah, so, all right. We're trying to do the best we can. Yes, yeah, it's just looking good. So I know you'd mentioned to me that you wanted to do a porch, but now it looks like it's written in your application that you would like to put a porch on the front of this house. Um, yeah. We have um, some elevation drawings of that porch. It looks like we have a survey map as well of the property and the proposed porch. Um, the neighborhood certainly supports front porches. There are numerous front porches all around this structure, existing house. As far as I'm, as, as far as I know, there was never a porch on this house. However, Bob Corby told me that he thought there was, but we have no photos to substantiate that. Um, Mike, well, there's you know, a there's a there's a thing in the that the cards on this house in the application. Which says the porch was torn off. Now, where did you see yeah, that? Yeah, that's true. Looking for that. I'm looking for it. Because I know I that have that. I actually uh, page I do one have that. Has the survey on it, and it does have a note that says porch removed. Really? Where yeah. is it? And that was like right. back in eight seventy five, I believe it was. But there was uh, definitely a porch one. to match uh, other houses in the area. In the January, in the, at the bottom of the application, in the January 27, 75 uh, inventory form on page one, it says porch removed. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Better. Okay, good. That, that makes it much easier. So essentially, you're putting a porch back on a home that had a porch originally. Right. And we went through the neighborhood and we tried to match it with uh, some of the other uh, porches that have been there for forever there and uh, we just wanted to you know stay with the neighborhood there okay great why would they ever re remove a porch i don't know but anyways um, i don't know either and my first thing my wife says is i want that porch back so that's yeah, why i'm here I don't, I don't blame her those porches are amazing so as far yep. as materials go um i didn't see a material list in here but is this porch going to be all wood <laughs> all wood yeah. And the railings and the steps, what are you doing with the steps? Are Everything, they wood? I told my contractor, all wood. So what, the steps are wood, because the, the, the materials are not in here. So all wood material, including steps and railings? Yeah. Is, is, the, front, is the front a lattice? The, the, the below the, the jacking of the floor of the porch? <coughs> yeah. Lattice, so it's a wood lattice. Yeah, it's going to be. And I mean, he's... the actual flooring is going to be wood. Yeah. The deck of yep. the porch. And how about the ceiling of the I'm porch? I'm not exactly sure what it, what it is, but I told my contractor I wanted all wood, just so okay. I know that uh, that it's going to be approved and everything's going to be all set. Yeah, I think. How about wood. the ceiling? How about the ceiling of the porch? Is that going to be like a tongue and groove wood? Is it going to? Is it going to? It's going to be it? wood also. Yeah, it's. I've got. I want it to be really nice. I want. I told him all wood on the ceiling also. Okay, and then it looks like the pillars on the porch are drawn in here, but it's, uh, we don't have any dimensions of those. Uh, there, he's trying to, we went down the neighborhood and we tried to match a bunch of the porches were very similar. So right. we're gonna use the same diameter and same, you know, we want it to just all uh, all match, um, you know. So I'm sorry, I'm actually, I, am looking at a, I am looking at something that might have the dimensions on it. Did yes, you page 87, page 87 has all the materials and all the dimensions on it. Perfect. Yeah, I think and I got it. Thank you. Through, yep. Great. How about lighting? What are you going to do for lighting? 
uh, we were, I, I asked them, do you all recess lighting there? Okay, so recess lighting might be a problem. Well, whatever, he, I, I believe he put something on the print were for lighting, so whatever that was approved. Yeah, I don't see any, does anybody else see any lighting in here? No, I don't see any lighting. I, could I interrupt for a minute, please? Mm -hmm. I really love, I really love this porch and concept, but the drawings do not have enough detail on them. And Mr. Morbido to be able to add, uh, I would like to see an enlarged drawing that shows uh, the porch railing with information about the spindles on it and the cap and the bottom rail. I would like to see a detailed drawing of the lattice under the porch. Uh, we need more concrete information about the lighting and what, where you're putting it and what lighting you're using. What, why would the mm -hmm. recessed lighting be a problem? Well, because I've never seen a village porch with recessed lighting in the ceiling. Has anybody else? And that just no. never was, that was never used when these porches were, were, were built. They're, they're they, always, they did have lights. Yeah, they had lights, but they, not, they weren't recessed into the wood. They, they were hanging lights, like traditional lighting. Well, typically, more typically, they're just a, a ceramic uh, fixture oh. mounted, on, mounted on the ceiling with a bare bulb. Exactly, so, flush mount. <laughs> so I, I my, personally, I think recessed is better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like it better personally myself. <laughs> I think there are a few porches. If you, if you look in the village, I believe there are a few porches that had the old style square. Recess light. Yes. Flush yeah. mounts. Yeah, flush mounts. Yes, they're, I agree. Was there, this was appropriate. They're flat. They're not. They're they're basically a recess light with just a square cover and glass. Yeah, but they're not. They're not a round reset light that sits in. They've got a a, a flush mount fixture on them. Right, but you can have recess lighting with a flush. Yeah, you think can have recess recess. lighting with a flush head. Okay, well, whatever we're going to use, we need to know what it is. So that that that's got to be in our application as well. So I love, I love this porch. I love the porch too, and I agree with Kenny. We need more information. We need more of a detailed drawing. We need more more dimension. Jeff, Jeff Pollock has his hand up. Yeah, Jeff. Just a quick question: What happens to the top of the bay window when that porch goes in? Does that stop at the uh, ceiling level? The existing bay window. Well, you know, we're, you know, tell from the, the porch, yeah, you can't tell from the drawings. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the, the window stays exactly in place, but the way he designed it, it, it doesn't encumber anything. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt it. And there's still plenty of room, uh, you know, on the porch in front of the bay window. Um, you know, the way Will he drew it up. Does that bay window come off? No, it shows on the it shows on the drawing, Lisa. Lisa, the, the bay window stings. It looks yes, to me but like. Will, the, but will the roof of the bay window come off? That's what I'm talking about. The roof of the no, bay window. No, the, no, it doesn't come off. The, the roof of the porch is above that. That doesn't come off. That that window stays exactly the way it is. <laughs> The, ceil the ceiling intersects the, the house wall above the roof. The roof of that bay window. That, I believe that's what the applicant is stating. Yeah, the window's staying the same. We're not touching the window. The roof goes above that. Okay. Okay, so, my, so basically, Ginny, you feel that this application needs to be more complete. We need more information yes. about spindles, yes. about yes. styles, yes. about caps, about, okay. The, draw, the drawing looks nice, but it's small enough and there are no notes on it to indicate what's what. Well, we're gonna make it consistent with everything with the other porches in the area. I'm behind schedule. Something happened with this last application where it wasn't put in the paper or whatever. I, I'm very far behind. Um, not of my fault, but I mean, I, I need to get this thing going. I, I it's going to be, it's going to be just like the other portion. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I don't know what else you could do crazy enough for you to hate it. You know, it's no, no, good. that's not, 
that's not the, that's not the point. The point is, is that we are trying to approve something, and we can't approve something that just is is hearsay. We need to have specifically what. I, I, what, what, what do you think I'm going to do to it? I, I I don't know what you think but I'm going to do to make it look. I mean, it's going to be a wood railing porch. I'm behind schedule because you guys didn't put the thing in. I I want to get going on this thing. I don't want to wait around again. Uh, from not nothing of my fault. I mean, I, I put the application. You guys forgot to put it in the paper, whatever it was. I gotta get going. I'm not. What what could I possibly do that you guys are gonna hate? I'm putting well, wood railing in. I'm doing everything like like everybody else is down the road. I I, I want to get going on this thing. I've already put my contractors off. I mean, it's not easy to get these guys scheduled as it is. I mean, I mean, I don't know what you what you want me to do here. I understand your. I, I understand that you're frustrated with that. I, it's just, and, and it, it looks like the, we're very excited about the porch. It's just that in order for us to approve something, we need to to know exactly what you're doing. I don't. I trust that you're going to do a great job. That's not the case. You know, what am I going to do that that's going to be so outrageous? You guys wouldn't like it. I'm using wood. I'm I'm trying to match what everybody else does on their own. I don't know what I could do to make you unhappy. To be honest with you. Well, well, I mean, have any idea what I could do to make you unhappy? Sure. I mean, we could. You could say you're going to do wood spindles, and then we could show up, and they could be, you know, six feet apart. And they could be swirly, and they. I mean, they're, well, they're obviously, I don't want my house to look I got a lot of money in that house. Can I, I interject here? Like uh, yeah, please. Uh, all right, Jeff, Jeff Turner, it's the attorney. Uh, we're, we're only requesting the information that our that our code requires us to have. And that is I'm actually gonna follow the code fully, I mean. fully dimensioned drawings so that when you build what you build, the building inspector, as part of his due diligence in after he issues the building permit, can monitor the work to make sure it's being done according to the plans. And that's that's the sole purpose behind. Uh, the, the requirement of fully dimensioned plans. Well, like I said, I'm behind schedule now, and I, I'm trying to get these contractors scheduled. I'm not going to, I'm going to follow what everybody else did down the road. I, I, you know, it's just, I want to do this thing, but I mean, if it's, if it's going to be a problem, I'll just leave the thing the way it is. I mean, I, you know, it's just, uh, I, I got to get going here. I don't want so to can I ask, you, can I ask you, logistic wise when you've got your builders there how do they know what to do well we we're following the other we we you know we walked down the road uh, with the mayor we we looked at a porch that we liked another one we liked they're all the same they're all you know got the spindles they're all same amount of part i mean i don't know how you could make it it so different where every, you know it wouldn't be liked by anybody. I mean, I'm not gonna, I want it to be consistent. That's what I'm trying to do. I wanna yeah. put a porch on like my neighbors have. So is it possible for you to write down the spindle um, size, the dimensions, the and, and then and, and, and just give us that? And, and so that you've got, so we got it documented? I'll, I'll I mean, have my architect, sure, I'll have them do it. But I mean, yeah. I, I just, there's only so many ways to, to Put that together i mean you know it's it's what everybody else does it's the same thing i'm doing the same thing as everybody else is doing over there i well, want to look at everybody's are not, everybody's coaches are not exactly the same there's a there's some variety well, I'm, I'm following the, the, the deck two doors down for me i want it to be consistent i want it to look you know like the neighborhood i want to i want to follow suit with everybody so, else so, right so the porch I, so the porch two doors down from you you want it to be exactly like that not exactly the same, but it's close. I mean, it's the okay. same okay. with the spindles, that's, the same wood. Right, but we can't, we can't approve something that's close. We need to approve something that's 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 solid and secure in in your design. So, so I I, I understand that you want to get moving on the porch. And I feel comfortable that if we can get these plans with the dimensions that we're looking for, that we can, um I can call a special meeting. And we could move forward without you waiting for a whole nother month. That would but be if, great. Okay, so so I'll if you can get your architect, yeah, and Steve knows exactly what we're looking for. And if you can get us the information, um, I can call a special meeting. Is that right, Jeff? 
I know that I've got to have a certain number of I, days. On three days notice. I just need three days so that we can put, post that on our website that there's another meeting coming up because the community has to know about it. And then we can move mm -hmm. forward. So I, 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 I can tell you right now, I think in general, I think the board really likes this. I don't want to speak for everybody, but I don't think it's going to be a big problem, but we do need, in order to vote, we do need specifics. Okay, I'm going to call my architect and have them work on it and get okay. you whatever you need, and I'll, I'll get it to you tomorrow. Great. So Steve knows exactly, and he's he's a great guy that you know, kind of by, and he knows what we need. And, and we'll just, uh, as soon as we get the information, if it's complete, I'll schedule a meeting. Okay. Great. Okay. Just, uh, I just have a question on on this. The uh, uh, I by the way I I give kick myself that I, I missed the house. It's just the property is fantastic. Uh, what yeah, I uh, what I'm wondering. You, you've got, if I recall, you put on a new shingle uh, roof, right? Well, I had to replace the roof. Yeah, it was, it was right. uh, okay. It was, uh, Everything it was, that you would put on the porch is going to match up with what is up uh, uh, up above that on the roof, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yep. You're muted, Lisa. Oh, muted. Lisa, you're muted. If you're comfortable with that, just um, give information to Steve. He'll just make sure that it's complete, and then I'll schedule a, a, a separate meeting for us to move forward as quickly as possible. Oh, uh, great! Thank you all very okay. much. Okay. Sure. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Okay. Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Bye. Thanks. Okay, so that is, that is our last final um, or our last application, but we do have an information only um, app, potential applicant on with us at 22 Boughton. Is the person for our information only at 22 Boughton available? I do not see her on here. Steve, I want to say thank you for doing my, I don't know if you did it, but thank you for doing those little drawings on top of the picture. That totally helps me visualize this. Steve, do you know if she was planning to attend or thought you would present? No, I, I, I talked to her and I told her that uh, she should be here to try and explain what, what she was proposing and to get a general consensus of how the board felt. I mean, you can look at it kind of based on their draw. It's, I know they're rough, but it, it basically shows that what they're trying to do is raise the back of the home um, and get rid of that kind of funky little corner there. Yes. That's on the back roof. It's completely on the back side of the house. Yeah. Um, does not increase the footprint of it all. The only visible change that would be front loading is they want to change the walkway from where it goes along the side and then into the door to straight from the front. There's a picture that shows you where there's two columns. Yeah. And, and a set of stairs. Oh. Okay. Yeah. They want so, to change. So that changes the porch too. They're moving the stairs. Yeah. So they want to move the stairs from the side to the front. Okay. I'm I'm gonna say that. To an addition, they're going to need an architect, and that the applicant should. I I don't I don't object to the concept of this addition. It looks like it's relatively small. Uh, it it can. I might want to see it modified a little bit to uh, adhere to our our regulate our our guidelines with the. Um, size of additions being smaller as they're added toward the rear but they're going to need an architect i yeah. highly recommend that they meet with an architect and get a, a sketch a yeah. preliminary sketch of what they want to do don't make working drawings don't spend a ton of money but get something that's more readable than this because yeah. I, I don't get this yeah, and I, I have to agree with Ginny, um, Steve. It, it looks it looks good to me, but again, um, 
I think I, I agree. Just get get a little bit better sketch for us. Don't spend a lot of money on the whole scaling thing yet. And um, I think they, I think they need a scaled architect sketch. Oh, scaled yeah. sketch, yes. Yeah, but I'm talking it's, about this, the whole. The whole time, so I not don't one drawings, not construction yeah. documents. Just a, a, a schematic design is what it's called. The, arch, yeah. the architect should provide a schematic design sketch Shop for drawing. us to respond to for information only. Yes, that, that she just wanted to get a general idea if it would be accept, accept or reasonably acceptable before she spent the money, and that's yeah, why I, I have her come in. And, from, what, from what I see, yeah, from what I see, from what I see here, I I think so, but I I could help her better if we had a little bit better of a sketch. Yes, that's that's fine. But, okay, and does yeah. everybody else feel the same way? Yeah, she had called like she had called actually after the deadline, and that's why I just did this just to get a general idea or, or a general thought from the board because I know we've had some issues with some additions before. So yeah, before this looks, I, looks reasonable to me. It, it it looks reasonable to me right now. Okay. Any other comments from the board? No. Okay. I just agree with it needs architects input. <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So um, before we close our meeting, I, I do want to quickly visit. Um, we've discussed window stuff, and we've been back and forth with Ginny trying to get us some names of evaluators. And then Ken was um, going to help uh, with the help of Jeff to get us repair people or craftsmen, whatever we want to label it. Um, I know, Ginny, how many evaluators were you able to pull together? Oh, you're muted, Jenny. Two evaluators, Steve Jordan and Christopher Brandt at Bureau Architecture. Okay, so Steve Jordan's still interested to be an evaluator? Yes. Okay. And both of them will, ex will expect to be paid, so we need to have a discussion, maybe not tonight, maybe a separate meeting with the uh, mayor to discuss uh, what a rational fee would be for an expert consultant, which our okay. ordinance allows us to do. Jenny, do you think you can get one more? Or do you think two is enough? Well, I've asked I've asked a third person that I think is, well, I know is exceptionally qualified, but his, his expertise is more in, um, he gave me an example. He's he's restoring some windows for uh, a building on the Herd Orchards West Side um, farmstead, and he was given an old window in parts in a box. Nothing was put together, and what he does is more putting together all the old parts when the windows are totally taken apart. Okay. And and uh, to to clarify that his position is and my position is there's not a window that can't be restored okay. so he would rather no. be available to to do restoration of a window that's in it really needs to be rebuilt parts, okay, are, so missing, so he, parts are rotten okay he, he could be an, he could be an, to be an evaluator okay so oh, so i i could suggest another name but i'd have to call him first okay um, so that would be Blake, great. We could look into that. I'd like three if we could. Okay. Well, Blake, I'm thinking now of Blake Held. He was he lived in the village. He lived at 35 Rand. He was on the he was on the old APRB. He was chair of the APRB. Okay. After, after he moved to Menden, he served as a as a paid consultant to the village in the past for other types of things. Okay, well, you know what, Judy, don't even bother telling us about it because if he doesn't want to do it, we don't need to know. So why don't you well, find I will, out? I will if, check with him. Okay. All right, Ken Morrow and Jeff Pollock, how about our repair people? Well, well I'm going to confirm this. Uh, because I think he put the, the list uh, together. It's a tough thing to uh, get a handle on. We have uh, three, three names so far, uh, and uh, I've been talking with the Landmark Society, and uh the key issue there they do have contacts but in my opinion they're not up to date that's a real key thing and then they also have to have some kind of capacity to be able to do the work 
So they're in the process of doing that over uh, as quickly as possible, actually. So I think we'll have a, a list of more than a few names, which is- So right now, Jeff, you've got three? No, I, I provided a fourth name. Yeah, I've okay. got a fourth name Twice from Jenny. Twice I provided the fourth name. Okay. Yep. So right now, so let me just make sure I've got this clear. So you have four names and you've talked- Four names. Four, four names and, and you've spoken to each of them? Except for the one that Ginny gave you? I spoke to them. I spoke okay. to the person I okay. contacted. Okay, so we have four names. That's awesome. That I think that's a great list. I mean, I, I, I guess. To provide some more. Yes, and I think that that's a good start. So I, I would like to get those names to Marina um, so that she can make a list so that we do have that available. And then we can always add to the list of repair people. Um, and I yep. think we should continue to at least get six would be great. Um, and that gives us some, a little bit more ability to, to uh, back us up when it comes to following what our what our regs are and what our guidelines are. That's going to help our, our residents to 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 try to save windows instead of replace them. Jeff, so you you you, very much. you do not, Jeff Pollock, you do not plan to contact the other the three names you got from the Landmark Society. You're going to wait for them to verify. Because I will call them. Uh, you can, but they're actually they're interested in more getting additional names. Well, I know I know they are. I've I've served on that committee. I've served on the committee that that reviews and updates and adds and subtracts names from that list. I know yep. it takes them a long time. They're all busy doing other things. I'm retired. Exactly. I'm happy to make those phone calls myself. And then I can let Caitlin know because it's Caitlin who manages that list, yeah. or at least she used to be the person who manages the list. Okay, I'm I'm I the more the better of qualified people. I think okay. it would be great. Okay, thank you so much. Jeff. I, I have a question. What? Yeah. What? Does anybody have a sense of the time frame these repair people are talking about? I know I know Jeff had talked to a couple of them. It varies. <laughs> That's a question that should be asked as part of the vetting process on whether or not they want to be on the list. Exactly. If, they're, it, if Jeff, they're two years out, then we're not going to put them on the list. And what's I think the variance? Have... Jeff, what's the variance that you're finding? The, the variance in terms of what? Timing. Time frame. Uh, it depends. I mean, so things change suddenly, but they're, uh, they're a couple months out. Everybody's going to be a couple months out. You can't yeah. be a that's, that's, No, no, no. That, that's perfectly acceptable. Week week. That's right. a perfectly acceptable time frame from my legal perspective. Good. Good. Okay. All right. Do we have any other comments or questions from the board before we end our meeting? He has his hand up. Yeah, I just, I just want to let you know, I, I actually been doing a little research, too, and I reached out to um, Albany and talk to some people there and they finally contact me back and they are struggling with this issue also. Yeah, um, I think they are, yeah. they, it's not just Pittsburgh, it's not just New York State, it's the whole country. Oh, yeah, exactly. Skilled yeah. trades, skilled trade workers are- Yeah, and they want to come up with some, Yeah, they want to try and come up with some guidelines as far as what's reasonable time frames, but like I said, they are struggling with it. Um, so I mean it is it is on the table, but it's a very difficult subject. So yeah, yeah, that it is. Okay, all right. Um, so the only thing I want to say, Marina, just uh, for the 36 Monroe Ave, um, the the applicant is going to work with Steve to get the things that we need, and then as soon as we get that, we'll have to to uh, decide on a meeting date um, three days after you are able to post it. Okay, and okay. we'll just do another Zoom meeting so that we can get this this porch going for him. Would, All right. Thank you. I think you. Would everybody be available next Monday? Because I know Mike, he's going to have everything today or tomorrow, or either tomorrow or Wednesday. Well, what are you going to what are you going to ask him for, Steve? Can I talk to you tomorrow and, and tell you what I want to see? Yes. Yeah. No problem. Right. Oh well, uh, it'll be tomorrow afternoon. I'm having a little surgery on my hand tomorrow, and I don't know exactly how I'll feel and and when I'll be available. Carpal tunnel. But if we're but if we're looking, 
if we're looking at um, meeting again on next Monday, which would be the 17th, I'm available at 5.30. It should only take us 10 minutes at the most. Okay. Okay. Available tomorrow. okay, so we could maybe push for the Monday the 17th if we get that information um, to us in time. Okay, Marina? Okay, sounds good. Great. Okay, guys, thank you guys all very much for your time. I thank appreciate you. it. You guys did a oh, great job. Awesome. Thanks for that work on the list. That's so going to really help us moving forward. Um, I'm a motion. motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank okay. you, guys. Meeting Good night, all. Thank okay. you. Bye.